Okay, let's see. It's it's here. It's here. <laughs> um, hang on one second. My we're having uh, connection issues. I think because I keep getting a pop up. Oops. Sorry. You're getting my hand again. Seems to be a thing. Uh, let's see. Did this print? <gasps> hang on one sec. All right, hmm, that's good enough. <sighs> Can you guys hear me or see me? It said that uh, I was having issues with uh, the connection, so I just wanna make sure. Hi, Brandy. Hi, Donna. Good, 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 I'm glad, I'm glad. Oh boy, so I I was trying to print my photo this morning and you know how um, when you, hello, um, you know when you um, download, picture, <clears throat> download pictures from your, um, your iPhone, how sometimes you have live photos and you have to import them to change them to a JPEG so you can print them. Well, I was having difficulty with that. Ah, you're sweet, Sophie. I've been running around like a chicken with my head cut off as usual, so. It's, it's, it's a real thing that happens around here. So anyway, I, I have a, a photo um, that I'm going to be using and I just sewed my cardstock this morning and it's still kind of damp, so, um, but it'll be fine, I think. I think, I think. So, uh, how many of you gathered supplies to scrap along, or are you just going to watch and um, do it later? Y'all going to watch me? Is that how this is working? Which is totally fine. There is, um, in the description box, if you didn't see it, there's a... Um, list of supplies uh, aw. hi Stephanie you're gonna scrap along yeah you're gonna create your gorgeous page Sophie um, yeah it's a busy day for a lot of you I'm sure um, let's see yeah so anyway there's a um, a supply list in the description box of everything that you'll need and that's kind of loose because I'm not exactly sure where I'm going with this aside from the fact that I have a sketch um, so uh, that's kind of the jumping off point for this so if um, you want to print the sketch out um, you know what you can, um, I, I think, I don't know if on the lives you can pause it, but you might be able to, uh, you might be able to pause it and kind of gather the things as you, as you need to, but regardless, this will be on playback anyway. So you'll be able to watch it later and follow along. So it's, uh, it's kind of a, uh, it's, it, yeah. So you'll be able to follow along easily. So, <sighs> I need a haircut, people. <sighs> yeah. And you know, you never really use, you realize that until you're actually staring at yourself in your camera. Because I, 
uh, I'm never on the front side of my camera. I'm usually taking pictures of other people and other things, so. So anyway, um, so who joined us last week? Were any of you here last week when we did all the mixed media stuff? I have all the dry, um, all the stuff that we did is, is dry. So uh, when I flip my camera, um, if you go to our Facebook group, Donna, are you, uh, have you joined our Facebook group? If you haven't, go ahead and do that. Everybody can join. Um, you just need to log into Facebook and uh, click on groups and, and um, search for Hip Kit Club. And our Facebook group will pop up and you just have to request to, uh, to join. And we'll, uh, we'll, accept, we'll accept and you can go in and the sketch is there and you can grab that, uh, grab that there. The other thing is, is that it's um, slightly visible I think at the beginning of this video on my on my graphic there. I wish I knew, I, I wish I was savvy enough to be able to add it to the corner of our video. I know that there's a way to do it, but um, I'm not quite there yet. Still a newbie when it comes to this stuff. So that's why I'm a little awkward with this. So uh, how many of you have our March kits to work with? That's what I'm gonna be using today. So uh, if you don't, if you follow, or if you watch and, um, okay. So Donna, go to our Facebook group and uh, you can, it, the, it, it's pinned at the in the featured um, post there. So you can go in there and you can print a copy of the sketch, or you can just bring it up on another screen and uh, have it uh, on your desk so you can kind of see it as we go. Next time I'll figure out how to put a little picture in the corner. Hi, Melissa. Good to see you. Thanks for joining. Are you scrapping with us today or are you just uh, watching? I wish my husband would bring me some coffee. That's what I wish. Because I don't have a cup at the moment. And to be honest, I just um, had a sip of the water that I'm going to clean my brushes in. Now, granted, it's in a clean glass. The water is clean and I haven't dipped any brushes in it, but um, yeah. Desperate times call for desperate measure measures. Ooh, yum. I wish I was coming to, uh, to uh, your house for dinner. I don't know what we're having around here. Our daughters uh, are out of town. You have the kit and you'll be playing along. Hi, Karen. Oh, good, good. Thanks, Brandy, for doing that. Okay, so uh, without wasting a bunch of uh, everybody's time, because I'm sure that you all have stuff going on today as well, and we all know that I tend to be long-winded and I go and go and go. So um, one second, I need to... Um, put this on my laptop so that I can actually make sure that I'm uh, that the my camera's in frame properly. But let me um, flip this upside down, and I kind of have a better idea of how I'm doing that this time. Maybe okay. Let's see. I think you're going this way, and I, I need to just see um, where we're at. 
gosh, that's pretty good compared to what we've done last, well, last few times I've been um, not quite. Uh, okay, so let me go and ha, yay. Okay, Donna, um, let's see here. I'm gonna... Okay, so now I can see the screen and make sure that we are all lined up. Let's see if I can get this light pointing the right direction. as well okay all right folks I think that we are um, somewhat good and we might just end up being as good as it's gonna get but you kind of see all my piles of stuff now those are the alphas that I'm gonna use for my title and I'm not sure which word I'm going to use, but I'm gonna figure it out. Um, this, this direction, because last time I was completely off. Okay, that's pretty good. Uh, I'll call that good. What do you think? Okay, that's good enough. Um, so here's my cardstock, and I've added gesso to it. And you can see it's slightly warped, but it's it's okay. I think when all is said and done, I'm going to uh, add a little bit. Uh, I'll probably uh, put it on another sheet of cardstock now. This is the sketch that we're working with, and it actually looks really good as an eight and a half by 11, but um, it just expanded it. it. It was supposed to be a 12 by 12, but it's fine. Um, the other things I was going to show you quickly were from last week, and I wanted to show you the background that I created last week. And basically what we talked about last week was being able to use a pattern paper, a busy pattern paper as a background and how to create a, a kind of a blank canvas to be able to do that. At first I added white gesso to this and then I added the color on top of it. Um, but this is, it doesn't show up on camera. It doesn't look quite as nice as it does in person. But if you look, depending on how I turn this, and I'm hoping that it's gonna pick up on camera, but you can see the shimmer on this. But anyway, so, if you know you decided to put your photo on this you've kind of got that uh blank area where you can put your your photo and and your um i would probably use a smaller photo but where you can put your photo in your embellishments and it's not getting swallowed up by your background and i think when we did this last time um Am I, hang on one second, because why am I low battery on my, <sighs> let's see, let's see, okay, hang on, maybe this came in, done, I can't tell if it's, uh, no, I think it should be okay. 
Are you guys there? Mm -hmm. Could you refresh my browser over there? Okay. Technical difficulties, but I think we're good. Not sure where I where I left off, but um, so this is the background. I think I was showing you the how pretty and shimmery it is. It's hard to see. I it's the low battery didn't come up again, so I think. Hey, say hello to everybody. Hello, Robert. Stop by. Will you bring me some coffee? Thank you. Anyway. Um, you can see how shimmery this is when you get it in the right light. Maybe here, gosh. Okay, I seem to be buffering quite a bit. Are you guys experiencing that as well? Okay, well, hopefully, hopefully it's it's working. I'm gonna have Bob keep or Robert keep an eye on this. Let's see, it's working. Good. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, so this was this was the background from last week. And if you put your photo on it and you add your embellishments, you've got that blank space where hmm. I'm not sure if that's I seem to be buffering on my lap or on my laptop, but what are you guys seeing? It may just be my internet here. Leave a comment if it's if it's working okay because hmm. Okay. It's just me then. I'm not going to pay any attention to uh to that then. It's, it's obviously on my computer that's having the issue. Okay, so space for photo and your embellishments and you can totally see them, right? Um, I'm not gonna use this one today, but uh, just wanted to kind of give you a peek at that. Uh, leftover from last week. The others were... Um, are we kind of keep an eye on this and let me know if it if, if it locks up mm. yeah my i think i'm having problems with my computer okay. um thank you so this was our um is our march stamp set for our color kit we just did a large stamp set this month we didn't do any ink pads with it to keep it more um, affordable. This is a six by eight uh, inch stamp set, so it's really good size. Um, but I used it to create um, these different backgrounds kind of to show you how the stamp works using different mediums. So this was with Catherine Puller inks and no gesso, so it's just purely stamping it. I uh, splattered some water and you'll see how there's uh, kind of lighter spots. So this ink is water reactive and it works very similarly to um, Tim Holtz ink. So uh, yeah, so this, this is no gesso. Did the same thing here, and this paper ha has a coat of gesso on it, and I used my brush and um, and uh, water bottle, and I 
uh, moved the pigment around and you see how that blends really easily. And then this one, I used uh, the stamp along with some Shimmers Mist. I squirted it onto my glass mat, dipped the stamp in it to add the ink to it and just stamped it directly to the paper. And these are um, on a cardstock with no gesso on it at all. And then this one was done on a cardstock with gesso. So you just see the difference in how they the pigments moved around. So we all kind of got some uh, basic mixed media information yesterday or last week. So this week we're gonna kind of build on that and we're going to create a layout that has a mixed media background. What's the client on there? Okay, yeah, it must just be here. What's buffering It's, it just kind of, it's okay. It, it's oh, not it's, doing it now, it was. Just a delay? Yeah, it is a little, but I'm not gonna watch that because otherwise it'll mess me up. I already have a hard enough time with public speaking. Okay, so here is uh, my background and let's kind of work on deciding, um, first of all, I'm gonna cut my photo down to a, uh, three by four. So there's that. This is my niece and she was about five here, I think. So that will work. Um, Generally, I use, I, I, especially when I'm scrapping on the fly, I always like to use a black and white photo because then I'm not competing with um, the colors that I'm uh, in the photo. But just so happens that this has a lot of pink and purple in it, so I think that this one will work just fine. So let's, for those of you who um, have your March kits and... Um, have your paper. I'm going to kind of keep this on this off to the side here so you can see it. Um, and I want to choose some papers to go along with it. And this one, I believe. Okay, some of these I, I took the uh, border off of, which, so I think, let's bring these over in the center so that I can kind of see all my, okay, this is one of the card stocks. That could work. This could work. I'm gonna do that. These could be a little busy, but this, I have this left over, so I can use that because I'm not gonna use a whole um, sheet. When you use black and white photos, it's really easy to do this because um, you're not trying to match things as much. Oops. At least you get kind of um, into my mind's eye, right? As I, as I do this, I think I like that. I also like this one, but um, like this too. 
And I might fussy cut some bits out of that one. This one, this one could work as well. Go the other direction. Um, oh, you know what? But I think I lose. Do you see how I love this color? It works with the top of her dress, but the only thing that you see is the top of her dress. So I, if I were going to use this color on my page, I would use it as accents, but not as a um, focal point. That's got too much, too much of that color on it. So we've got some yellow. Nope, nope, nope. So I'm kind of leaning toward and the other thing too is we have to remember the back sides because they're always good. Now these are our cardstock um, papers and those the yellow, the pink. Uh, bright pink. I don't know if I would. The colors are all so good, right? So, where did my photo go? This one would work well. That one would not. That one would not. I think that this might be too, too soft. Yeah, too soft, too soft. Okay, so. I'm going to put these aside. I'm thinking this. These are the card stocks, and I probably will pull from some of that. Um, this, this one, I'll probably fussy cut some stuff from it but um, I'm not going to use it. I probably will use some of this, some of this, and maybe, do I want some of this? I might do that. And so I don't know if you've ever been to like a fabric shop or um, even to like when you're looking for throw pillows for your sofa or whatever, they always say to have a large pattern, a medium pattern or medium pattern and a, like a busier pattern. And so when you're choosing your fabric for your, for your pillows. So with that, kind of in mind, those totally work. If I did this, this would also work, but do you see how these two get lost with one another? There's really not an, enough variation in color. So um, that one I probably wouldn't use. This would actually be kind of cute too, but I really like that blue. So. These are going to be the colors of my page. So when I'm use when I'm wanting to start adding my mixed media to my background, these are the colors that I kind of want to work with. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, let's see, I'm just looking for, um, what 
Let's do some color. Um, I usually, I have some uh, color swatches of these, but I'm not sure exactly where they are. So I'm just gonna take a, actually this one has gesso on it, so I'm gonna use this. Um, so this one is a Creamies and it's by Shimmers and it these come like I mentioned earlier or I mentioned last week they come solid so you have to add a little bit of water to them this one is also a Creamies and this one's called Sky's the Limit and generally when I get my shimmers at least my paints they're um, labels on the top are uh, matte, so you can add color to the top of them. So you have a, a little paint swatch to kind of work with. Um, here's a, and this one is a Shimmers. Oh, and there is nothing in that one. Empty. All right. I also have um, some ruby and I had some pink stilettos. Let me grab that really quick. And I'm sticking with shimmers because I'm working with white gesso. Um, next time we do this, I'll use clear gesso and we can use some Lindy's. Okay, so these are my shimmers. And I keep them in these little trays. I got them at Costco, or I mean at Target for like nine bucks. This one is called Hot Stuff, that could work. But see how I've um, added paint to the tops of most of these? So you can kind of see what they look like. So I wanna do that. I just am looking for, okay, this is pink. This is more purple. This magenta, but watering that down might be okay. But um, I haven't had all of these, but the colors that I'm choosing have been in previous color kits. But many of these kind of have a red or an orange tint to them. And because my photo is very... Um, is very pink and purple. I wanna kind of stick with things that have that pinker, more pink tone. I like to get maybe, um, it'd be a duplicate. Okay, I think that if we kind of work with these, this and set these aside. And I'm looking to see. I think that this one. Okay. So here's a couple of others. So let's add some water to the ones that need water. This one is called Hot Stuff. This one needs water. And honestly, I should keep these in alignment with the lids. Otherwise, I'm never going to be able to know which one's which. And that will be a disaster. Okay, so these are shimmers. 
The shimmers all are liquidy, so they don't need water. The um, inklings and the creamies all need water. So let's add water to these. The other thing that I will tell you is, uh, okay, this one's this. I think, gosh, I'm gonna have to rewatch because I did exactly what I said I wasn't gonna do. Okay, so these all have, um, use a piece of paper to swatch these out. One of these. Okay, so I'm, oh, my brush is dirty. Look at that. That is par for the course for me, just so you know. Okay, so this one, we've added a little bit of water. And that one, I'm gonna do these in order. So that one is called Berry Hot. And I think that that one would work perfectly. Um, this one, this next one, You just kind of have to kind of rub your brush through them. This one is called Hot Stuff, and that one has a little bit more red in it, which is kind of nice with some of the red tones on some of the flowers. So this one, oh, that's really pretty. That one's called an Inklings, and it's called Precious Posy. This one is called Sky's the Limit, and I think that this is gonna be really close in color to the paper that I'm using, and it is indeed. And the Inklings are shimmery. Okay, so I think that, see the yellow right there? Okay, can you guys see me? Sometimes. Yeah, oh. Okay. Can you see me? See me? See me? Okay. okay. All right. Sorry about that. Thank you for uh, being patient. Always, always something around here. Um, so I was swatching some of my um, shimmers here. Uh, these were all inklings and creamies. I did the three different shimmers uh, paint pots here. And then this one was a spritz called pink. This one This is how you um, heat them up. Am I? Okay. Okay. Um, this one. Is pretty. This one's called. Uh, sweetheart. I think I used this one last last week. Yep, sweetheart. Uh, it's a pretty pink. And then this one is called Pink Stiletto. And I think that this one is a super bright, bright pink. And I don't know if I'll use that. I don't think I will, but it does match her skirt really well. Okay. 
So I think what I'm gonna use is the sky's the limit. Um, I wanna use the um, not Ruby. I think I'm gonna use the sweetheart vibes and I'm gonna use the very hot. And then I think all the others are a little bit too bold for what I'm looking for. Now, I think I mentioned this last week. Don't put the lid on these um, until they're dry because if you if you do, um, they're gonna get moldy and you don't want that to happen. So this, I'm just putting the lid along with the paint in order back here on my desk or on my cabinet behind me. So, okay. And I may kind of come back and, and grab a couple of other things, but I, I uh, okay. So there we go. These are our colors. Now who's ready to work on their background? Okay, so pull this over here and, okay, so I was so flustered and I'm hoping Robert remembers, because maybe he's watching this, and he remembers to bring me a new cup of coffee because I um, saw that things weren't working quite right, and I cleaned my brush and my coffee. So, uh, that's not good. I think I'm gonna bring a little of this Snowway Man vibes in here as well. So with our sketch, I know that in the center of our page, our, our layout is going to, I'm gonna use a pencil here to kind of show you. Our layout's gonna be coming down kind of down the center, right? And this is gonna all get covered up, so it doesn't matter. But um, I want my mixed media to kind of come out this direction. And I can use my eraser when all this is said and done. I'm gonna lighten it up a little bit. This is the same eraser as I use for my stamps. And it works perfectly for all marks end up. I'm just lightening those a little. Okay. I can see them, but you you likely can't. But our, our layout's going to go come down the center here, and I want my mixed media to kind of come down here and peek out either side. So with that said, I'm going to take my spray bottle, and I'm going to add a little bit of water to the center, and I think that um, I want my background, I think I'm gonna do the, the I think I'm gonna do more pink on this side and more blue on this side. So right now I'm adding, I'm gonna grab my brush to make sure, my paper towel to make sure my brush. Okay, so the other thing too is for this kind of stuff, I really do prefer using round brushes. I told you my daughter borrowed my brushes. I ordered these on Amazon and 
these big round brushes, they hold a lot of water and they're and a lot of pigment and they're really helpful for moving your pigment around. And they're great for splatters too, if you like to add bigger, larger splatters. Okay, so here, I'm gonna add, pick up some of this very hot and I'm gonna add it. Honestly, I'm gonna kind of pour some of the drips out. Okay, so I'm gonna add that. I'm gonna let this kind of move around because I want, I don't want this to be too bright. So I just wanna allow the color to kind of move around a bit. See how the water is just, you can see it really well, how the water's just moving this color around on my page. Now, I'm gonna kind of add Do you hear my cat? He's got the biggest, babiest meow. Okay, these were really inexpensive brushes and I see why. Because the brushes, or the bristles are coming out. Okay, now I'm gonna add a little bit of Sweetheart. And But I really want it to go kind of all the way up to the top and all the way to the bottom. And then I want to have it bleed. Do you see how I'm just letting the paint kind of move with the, and I'm kind of just allow, I'm kind of steering it a little bit, but I'm not, Okay, so there's that side. And I'm gonna let this kind of dry a little bit. And now I'm gonna add a little bit of water on this opposite side. And clean the pink off my brush. I'm gonna come in with this Sky's the Limit. And this is a Creamies. This, this one, I believe, doesn't have shimmers. I think I hear coffee maybe coming my direction. Wouldn't that be nice? Okay, I'm gonna I'll let it kind of blend in the center a little bit, but I really want and like I said if you if you wet this and you let it sit like 30 minutes or so even even I didn't put a whole lot of water in this but you have to let the pigment soften I need a beverage. I need a beverage. I stuck my paintbrush in my coffee. Um, you could bring me a Diet Coke. So I'm just, all right. So I'm gonna let this move around a bit on this side. I don't want a lot of pink, because I don't want this turning. I'm gonna kind of dry this part off right in here, because I don't want this to turn into a heavy duty purple. I wanna keep that kind of periwinkle cornflower blue. 
And this part's all gonna be covered up anyway. So. Ah, thank you, sir. Thank you. If you can hear the fizz of my drink. Okay, so now I'm gonna kind of push some of this this direction. And I'm gonna add a little more spritz over here. And I'm gonna let this water kind of run. Hmm, don't want that. Don't want that drip. And the beauty of gesso, if your pigment goes somewhere where you don't really want it, um, you can um, mop it up with a paper towel. Okay. So now let's see if I can get some more of this. I just want this to be a little bolder. And I kind of want this to extend out this direction. Um, and I'm probably gonna take a tiny bit of this blue and add it in there. Okay, now, for the sake of, so the other thing to think about when you're doing a background like this, especially when there's a lot of water, um, is that, I'm gonna let some of this blue blend this direction. Um, when you have a lot of water like this, Sometimes it's good to let the, um, to actually dry your, um, your layers. I'm gonna add just a little bit more pink on this side. I forget these backgrounds take a lot longer than I think that they do or than I anticipate them to. Okay. a little bit more pink. I want it to go out this way. Now I'm gonna let it blend this way. And kind of down the center as well. Ah. Okay, just wanna make sure that all is still working. Don't want that, but I do. And see how I'm just kind of, I'm steering the, the water, but I'm not. Okay. So, 
I'm gonna dry this with my heat tool. And if I need more, I'll come back in. Um, with a paintbrush, but I'm gonna add some more water to these shimmers in case I do. Literally like watching paint dry. dry and I'll dry it from the bottom as well. So you can kind of see what it looks like. The other thing too to remember if for some reason you do a mixed media background and you feel like it looks just a little bit too dark and you want to lighten it up a bit you can add um white splatters and if you do it with white like um white gesso it sits on top of the paper you can also do it with white acrylic paint, but sometimes that will blend in. But the white gesso, you see I'm making a huge mess here. Ah, we're almost dry, folks. How's your background coming along? For those of you that are so pretty. I'm going to set these aside for now so that I don't make a mess and get everything. Okay. So I'm going to call this good for now. Okay. So the next thing we need to do is we need to choose our backgrounds. And you see, as I'm looking at this at the moment, I've got a lot of pink here and I want maybe a little more of that poorly color and I think I'm gonna add just a 
a little bit. Mm -hmm. I have, huh, perfect. So, you know how you can get clogged nozzles with these? That's exactly what has happened here. So, okay, I'm gonna add a little bit of water. And for those of you that have heard about the packaging technique, that's what this is. And I'm adding, I want a little bit more reddish. Okay, I'm gonna pull that aside. Kind of want some of this up. So this has more, a little more red to it. And I think when the blue blended in with the um, purple, Time will help if we do mixed media. We'll have to maybe do our backgrounds ahead of time. I always forget how much time they take. I think that that's going to be better because it's just got a little bit more red to it. Okay, so there's that. I do want to add a little more of this as well. Just to get a little more pigment on this side. Thing to keep in mind, mixed media backgrounds oftentimes look like hot messes until you add your stuff to them. I just don't want a hard line there. Okay. All right. Get this done and we are all set. Oh. 
probably kind of nice for you to be able to see because oftentimes people do these backgrounds and they're like oh my god it's a hot mess i'm not using it i can't i don't know how to do this i'm never trying this again and um i think if you look at anybody's background like this i think that you're gonna see the same thing Here. Okay. Once this dries, the paint is set, so it's not gonna, it's not gonna move. So now you see we've got this warping going on. I'm just gonna fold it the other direction, and that's gonna be helpful. All right, move that out of the way because I don't need it at the moment. Um. Okay, so. With our sketch, put this over here. Don't need this anymore either. Moment. Don't need that. So now we're gonna start piecing this together. And um, you just need to figure out what, how you wanna layer. Now, I'm thinking that I'm gonna have the floral on this side because I'm gonna layer a bunch of florals on this side and I don't want them to compete with this. So I think what I'll do is, I'm taking the sketch here, let's put that there. I'm gonna take a sheet or a strip of this and Probably like, I'm gonna say maybe pull my ruler out so that I can give you guys an idea of how wide I'm gonna make this. I'm gonna say maybe three inches by and I might shorten this a bit, but at the moment, I'm gonna do three by 10. Does that look straight to you? Because it certainly does not look straight to me. I'm having trimmer issues too. So I bought that um, Sizzix paper trimmer and uh, that's better. Um, and I bought it thinking that it would be great to have that in place of having to have um, a trimmer and a scoreboard and all of those things. 
you know, actually, I'm kind of wanting the direction. Okay, the, now this is just me being picky, but do you see how I cut this? The leaves are going the wrong direction, and I'm just going to take and make this work this direction. Okay, so my husband and I have been watching a new show. Um, if you have a show that you like, you can leave it in the comments below because I'm always looking for something to watch. Um, we've been watching The Traders. Has anybody seen that? We've, we're streaming it on, um, on uh, let's see. Peacock, I believe. Okay, so I'm going to, I want this um, to go this direction. Okay, so I'm, I completely, I do this all the time where I halfway stop talking about things. So I bought the Sizzix trimmer um, and paper score and I thought, oh, this is gonna be great because I can have this and um, it's, I, I, I only have to have one thing, you know, like I can have the paper trimmer, the score and all the things in this one, in this one tool. Well, that isn't really how that works because the paper trimmer on it is terrible. It is absolutely awful. In fact, I think it might be the worst paper trimmer I've ever had in all of the many years that I've been scrapbooking. And it, it wasn't cheap. It was like, um, I think it, it was like 60 bucks. And uh, I was so hopeful that it was gonna work out and it was gonna solve all my problems and then I could get rid of a bunch of stuff. Well, that isn't the case at all because it's terrible. Okay, so this, I'm gonna cut just maybe an inch off the top so that I can lay this over the top like this. And then, but, I'm wondering if I want to do this differently and have this I think I want to do it differently because see how I put this here and there's so much random going on and if I put it this way, it makes it work better, I think, anyway. So this, and I'll put this here. And then I want a strip of this one. And I think I just want this to be pretty thin, maybe like, I'm gonna make it up maybe a little bit thicker than I want it, but I'm thinking maybe like three quarters of an inch. And I'm gonna put this over the top. And honestly, I think I want this a little thinner too because All right, let me try this. All right, yeah, I think I wanted that a little bit less as well. So if we do this and this and this, and I'm gonna shorten this one, or make this a little narrower as well, because I don't want 
this to show off. Um, I, I want this to be um, the part that separates either side of the page. And I don't want anything to be like um, extending beyond that. So I didn't want the floral to be um, extending beyond the, okay. So this is kind of, I, I wanted something to, that was a little um, more graduated. Okay, so kind of like this. And I'm gonna use, rather than, I might go back in with my um, liquid glue after, but initially I'm gonna use my tape runner um, to glue these. And I'm gonna use my T-square ruler because for some reason this cut crooked and I can't line it up great. Okay. So this and boy, part of it. This is so random. I don't know whether, I don't, I can't quite decide where the, oh, you know where it's wrong? I think it's wrong down here. Down there. Okay, let's see. This is square, 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 square. Okay, so this I'm gonna put over the top of this, something like that. And then I'm gonna add this in the center. Oops. I want the blue on the outside. I'm a little embarrassed because now you guys are gonna see my real creative process and you're gonna see what a hot mess it is. Okay, I want the pink to kind of show through. And now when we actually glue this down, because there is mi mixed media on here, um, and I wanna make sure that this is the center of my page right here. So I kind of want to have an idea where I'm lining things up. Okay, so this I want to be about here. And I'm gonna add Tape guns just don't work super well on mixed media. So I am going to go in um, with some liquid glue after all is said and done. And I'm going to slip this underneath here. but I want some of this to show beyond my... Okay. That should be about right. And the only reason why I want this um, 
dot to be straight is because it's linear. Otherwise, I wouldn't care. So this one I can use the dots to kind of line this up so I know that it's somewhat straight. I'm gonna add these here and here. Okay, so there's kind of what the background is gonna look like. I might have a little bit more of this floral showing than I want. So this is how um, Miss Kimberly scrapbooks because she tears things up all the time. Okay. Yeah. I just wanted a, just a glimpse of each one of these papers. I don't want a lot of them because the flowers on the opposite side, I just wanted them for color and to add just a little bit of texture. And if I can get this to happen right. Okay, well, that's good enough because all this stuff is gonna have layers on top of it. But see how we've got the pink, we've got some of the purplish blue, and the yellow is just a random color, which is totally fine. Now, I'm gonna take my photo, if I can figure out what I did with it. Around here somewhere. Here it is. And I think, I because I've got a lot of color here, but, um, I think I might mount this on this bright pink. And I usually, uh, oftentimes I don't uh, map my photos, but for this purpose, I want to do that because the background of my photo is so light that... Um, it gets lost. Okay. And I just want a super narrow mat. I don't want a lot of color behind this. Okay, so this is going to go here. Um, I'm going to tuck something here so that this pink edge doesn't get lost. Um, and it might be a tag or something like that because we had um, some tags in this. Um, no, I'm going to have a lot of flowers, so maybe no, maybe, no, maybe, maybe yes, but I'm not sure yet. This might work. Uh, I'm hold on to that one. No, 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 no. This one, maybe. Actually. Maybe. Uh, and this one, uh, it could be cute, but I'm thinking no, because the only thing you see is, is that. The other idea 
I have it. These are the Pocket Life cards. Kind of like that, maybe. And the thing to remember about these, actually, is that they are double-sided. So if you don't see what you like on one side, you might see something you like better on the other. And honestly, this... I wouldn't, I'm gonna cut, if I use it, I'm gonna cut it down. Probably cut it in half. This is kind of cute too, with the little um, vertical lines. Uh, notes from today. If I use that, maybe. No, 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 maybe. Uh, okay. I'm kind of thinking, I know that this is pink and pink. Um, We could do that, and then we could have and like I said, I I'm I'm gonna cut these down because I don't want to lose all of this uh, these florals because that they're, they're gonna make all of the flowers that we add make sense. And to be honest, I think that I like this the best. Um, and I'll probably add something else on top of it, but I kind of like that. Okay, so these I'm gonna toss over here. Now, I do want a little bit of foam adhesive behind. Not that. Behind my photo, I wanna, give it some, some dimension here. So I'm gonna cut this. I'm actually gonna cut this in strips because I don't, I wanna be able to tuck things under here. And um, if, I have it as a solid piece, it's gonna be harder to do that. So I'm gonna put it at the bottom here and then I'll add a little bit more at the top here. And I'm gonna use my liquid glue I have a couple of different glue bottles. Now this one I got from Amazon and it's got the, uh, it's got the um, uh, uh, quick dry, Scotch quick dry glue in it. And I feel like the quick dry glue um, is really thick and it makes it hard to squeeze it out. You know what, to be honest, I want to kind of keep this side lifted, but I'm going to glue this part down. And here's our sketch. So, actually, I might want to lift it up just a tad because I need to have room for our title towards the bottom, so. Okay, so I'm gonna leave that there. I might put this here. I think I'm gonna cut it in half, and I don't really care if this is totally straight 
because it's going to tuck in kind of right, right here. I think I want this blue to show at the bottom. So I'm just going to kind of piece this together and then Okay, and I think I'll probably put this here. And because I'm gonna um, layer some florals right over here. So um, you aren't gonna see that seam. So I think I'm gonna leave that there. I'm not gonna glue those down quite yet, but um, I like the vertical or the horizontal stripe and I love being able to use that uh, tag in a different way. Okay, so there we've got that. Um, and then let's do the fun stuff. Um, we need a bunch of um, little paper strips. I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do with this. And I was thinking that I could use some of the um, border strips from, maybe not the, I don't think the orange. Let's see what we've got here. Um, no. No, no, this one would be cute. Uh, not the orange, not the daisy. Maybe the green. Um, the dot could be cute. And then there's gonna be too many flowers for me to use that. So there's, Kind of an idea of some of the things that we could um, add in. I'm not a hundred percent. I'm I'm not sold on the yellow. Um, this pattern is going to be repetitive, so I'm not going to do that. But I do like this little um, flower, and so I think I'm going to cut these down. I'm going to cut it in four inch pieces. Um, do I want four? Let's do, yeah, four inch, and then we can shorten some of them down if we want to. Um, I think the part, I do like the, Purple, so I'll cut these down. And these are all, mm -hmm. um, it's kind of got messed up a little. Four inch, four inch, and four inch. And they don't have to be exact. You could honestly do this with your scissors. Probably some of... Do I want the light pink? I might actually not want this one. I might just want a strip of the bright pink. Um, and it'll pull that color, that brighter pink color that we have on my background. And then also that's been, that's matting the flower. So I'm going to do this in a half an inch strip. Let's just add that there. I have a guillotine trimmer, which is usually my go-to. 
and um, so if I seem awkward with this trimmer, there is a reason why. So let's do these in four inches as well. Four inches, and this will just kind of help everybody that's following along if they're wanting to do this exact thing to have measurements. So these are half inch wide um, by four inches long, and I think I'm gonna do this green one too. May not use all of these, but um, side and just to quick for for time's sake let's just quickly okay got some little scissors here this is how I um cut the notches or notch out the um cut down the center and then I just cut inward to the center and to the center. And then you've got your little, your little notch. Some papers, it's harder to see that, but once. There's that one. These are like sewing scissors. Do you hear my cats? They're playing. And for this purpose, they're not as easy to use. cutting towards the center. Oh, so um, back to the traders, right? So um, Robert and I started watching the traders a few weeks ago. We watched the complete first season and um, it was really good. And so we're at the end already of the second season and it's a super fun show. If you haven't had a chance to watch it, it's on um, Peacock and uh, we stream it and um, it's just it's a it's a, a game of, of uh, mine so basically what happens is they bring in like a group of there's like probably 20 people and um, the second season, all of them had been on some type of reality show. So whether it was the Housewives um, of Miami or California or wherever. Um, and then there were some people that did the, the challenge. I think that that's a show, but I've never seen it. I don't know what it is, but there were a few people that had been on that. Um, there was... Pilot Pete from The Bachelor, he was on it, and he um, actually did really well. Um, I did watch his season of The Bachelor, and I, I didn't think he was, um, he handled himself very well, but that's just my opinion. And I have, my kids are like, oh my God, Mom, you have so many opinions. And I guess I do. But anyway, so he was on it. Um, let's see who else. Oh, um, for those of you that have watched Survivor before, uh, Sandra from Survivor was on it. Um, and I'm 
trying to think if there was anybody from, and then a few people from the Big Brother, and I never watched that show, so I'm not, I'm not familiar with it. If you watched it and you liked that, if you liked Big Brother, leave a comment. I'd love to know what your thoughts are, because um, Bob and I were thinking of of watching it. Okay, this looks like Easter eggs, doesn't it? Perfect for Easter, I guess. Okay, so I am thinking that I was gonna add, I think maybe, I'm gonna slip these underneath, which is a, one of the reasons why it's probably good that I didn't glue those down with liquid glue, because I, if not, I or if I had, I could, you know, cut these down, but it allows me to slide them in and out and figure out where I wanted, um, how I wanted them to go. So I'm thinking that the pink, maybe the green. I'm not sure if I want the yellow because I do have some yellow on some of the flowers. So, um, I'll have this one. I'm just going to kind of place them, I guess. No, I don't want that one yet. I'm going to do the blue because it has a little bit of pattern. Add the purple, the pink. I'm going to put eight of them, I think. And they could have been a little bit wider. Um, and in fact, I may change the way I, I, I put them down. And I may add some, some wider ones as well as a... So pink, green, periwinkle, and um, purple. Okay, so those are on the side. I do think that we need some yellow, honestly. So I'm gonna cut a few of these and I'm just randomly cutting them. So let's notch these. There's yellow. Yeah, I think we did need the yellow because we've got yellow on the other side. And, um, and these don't have to be perfect. And I think you're seeing like, as we start layering stuff over the top of this, um, the background becomes less and less scary. And to be honest, now that I'm, mm -hmm. I think I need this. Now I've got green. No. Okay. We're going to kind of just play this as, okay, so we'll do that. Might start with the yellow at the top. Yellow. Um, yellow. Green. Thinking maybe not the purple. And don't know if I want the pink. Uh, the green. I think I'm going to need to have the yellow, blue. and green. I do think I need the pink on this side though. Yes, ma'am, I do. So that's gonna go after the green, after the green. And after the green, where did, I didn't want that 
that one. Where did my other blue one go? One, two, three. One, two, three. Oh, here's the pink after the green. And maybe, did I have one more yellow? I think I might, just to balance it out. Okay, so there's that. I'm gonna leave these just kind of sitting there like that. And now I want to start adding some flowers um, over here. And these are some that I fussy cut out of the pattern paper. Um, I use the, get some of this out of the way. This is how my desk usually ends up looking like a scary mess. Actually, I might add that. Um, over here, but I'm not sure yet. Keep that, keep that, throw these away. Okay. To be honest. Um, okay. So, um, these I uh, fussy cut out of the um, one of the pattern papers from our March kits. It's the, and it wasn't that hard to fussy cut, to be honest. In fact, and it's maybe because of the way that I did it. So this is the paper that I fussy cut these out of, and I didn't go around each petal super carefully. I just took it and I <laughs> cut around the edges. So they're all like squared edges. So I cut around in a circle and then I just went in and um, cut into the, in between each petal. So they're not um, super like frilly and pretty. Um, this one, however, that doesn't look very good, so. And I might, I may or may not keep the leaves, but I thought having some of these um, daisies would be pretty, so I could add a few of these. Um, these are all the daisies that I cut, and maybe having a daisy. Then there's, some extra leaves, and there's these little um, posies, and I'm not sure if I'm going to use those either, um, but there's a lot of uh, this paper you could easily fussy cut from that, and then there's also these little um, tulips, and I think that these are all too small for this particular page, but I think that they could have been cute. Um, the other thing is that we've got, if you didn't want to use fussy cut flowers, this, or these came in our um, embellishment kit. We, we always have like a set of uh, floral die cuts in our embellishment kit and you could easily use these and I think that that's what I might end up doing here um, because I'm tucking this I'm gonna cut that portion off and I'm probably gonna cut And I think, just for, uh, yeah, going around this pink one, I'm just gonna cut along the edge just to remove some of this white trim. There we go. So we can lay, start layering some of these underneath. 
and I think I'm gonna cut some of the foliage off of these because I'm gonna lay, I'll layer that afterwards. So, get this, the green off. Obviously. If you have fussy cutting, here's the key. Fussy cutting, if you have a really nice set of fine, uh, uh, like fine tip scissors, and if they're sharp, it makes fussy cutting so much easier. These are like from the sewing section of Michael's and they're, I, I think I got them in the embroidery section along with like the, or either embroidery or along with like the um, sewing notions. But the nice thing about these is that they're super, the tip is really narrow um, and they're super sharp. So they don't get stuck and it doesn't require as much muscle when you go to um, cut your stuff. So, and it, you, I think that because it's a lot more smooth, like those other scissors I was using, those were Tim Holtz scissors and there's a slight serration on those. So they don't cut as nicely, and I feel like they're harder to maneuver, whereas these are super easy. And uh, I'm just trimming some of this white edge off. So do you all have fun plans for dinner tonight, family, or are you um, just relaxing? Everybody has such different plans on Easter. Oftentimes it's morning stuff um, with Easter egg hunts and that kind of thing. I will tell you that um, Easter egg hunts were my least favorite thing when my kids were growing up because all three of our daughter's birthdays are 11 days apart. And they start on March 19th, March 31st, and April 1st. So when we were having to do all the birthday parties and then... Um, a bunch of Easter festivities, it about did me in every single year. So I'm going to, don't wanna lose that leaf. And because this is a larger um, die cut, it's easier to cut around. So I'm gonna, remove those leaves and I, I'm gonna tuck them in elsewhere, but um, yeah. So I'm gonna cut this in half so that I can use it and then we can have, we can kind of layer these along the border and they don't all have to be um, like together. So some of them, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a few pieces from the, um, the floral, like the florals from the, um, from the flower die cuts and I'm also going to take um, some of the fussy cut flowers as well and add those in. And then 
um, but I do think that I need to secure some of these. Um, and so for those that are trying to follow the sketch, I keep moving it and I apologize for that. Um, so I'm going to use my tape runner here so that I can um, tuck them. And if I need to move them or if I need to lift them up, I can do that. So let's just, and I think if we can start, I'm gonna move this in a little bit so that, see this is come in, because I might not want as many as I think I do. There we go. And I'm gonna bring this one in as well because I think I'm gonna wanna have a leaf that's kind of towards the end. Now, there's my T-square ruler. I don't necessarily care if all of them are straight, but it's gonna make it a lot easier to line these up if you have a few of them straight. And if you start with the ones on the end, it makes it a lot easier. Okay, so let's see how that one's kind of messed up a little bit. Okay, so we'll do that and then This one, we'll tuck that in here. And the green one, we'll go cut this down just a bit. Add this. And I'm just gonna cut, I wanna, you know, just a little less than a half an inch apart. And so if I don't need all of these, I'll um, toss them. Okie doke. So this one, cut just a little bit off the end. And these probably don't need to be quite as long as I made them. Um, I don't want all the yellow ones to be short though. That's the thing. Pull this one here and make this one a bit longer. And this one kind of can be a little bit shorter. And a lot of these are probably gonna get covered up quite a bit, but that's all right. Where is the blue? The blue, the blue. And if I need to have them extend a little further, I can pull them out because I've only attach them with the uh, with um, with the tape runner because we're gonna have some flowers there and um, okay. so here. Let's see. 
I wish I could be faster. Who's, who's a fast scrapbooker? It is not me. Um, green, and then let's do the pink. Cut this down just a bit. Add some adhesive here. And so that they're kind of equally, equally spaced. Okay, so there's those. And I'm gonna move all this other stuff out of the way. Now, um, I'm gonna add, start adding some of the flowers. And I'm just gonna lay these out a little bit because Um, honestly don't want this to be so big, so I'm going to add this up here. Um, This one out and the reason why I'm using some of these uh, floral die cuts is because they're bigger and it's faster <laughs> so okay so here's this and don't And now that I've trimmed all of the others, I feel like I need to trim these as well. it this way a little bit and I'm going to tuck this one there and I kind of like the white ones because I like the fact that they're breaking up some of that bright color. Mm -hmm. oh, here's another white one. So I'm going to add this one here as well so that they're all kind of here okay so we've got those now we can build out beyond that with some of these other 
um, more dainty pieces. So like, can kind of come out here, actually, nope, I think I do want it there. Um, here are some leaves that I cut through and we can gonna cut the white edge off we can add some more greenery in here by filling in with some of these. Here's, here's another one. Just gonna trim the edge off. Kinda. Um, I might add a leaf in. Mm, not there. Maybe. Actually, it might be kind of nice to throw one in kind of here. Okay. So, um, we can put these guys. Um, where do I want them? I kind of want them right here, but I do want this at least cleaned up. These could go right there and we can add some of my white daisies and these some of them have um, the foliage on them which is nice so it'll add that pop of green and depending on how I decide to lay these out because I don't want I, don't, I honestly don't want too many so I'm kind of feeling like for the larger flowers um, don't want it to be too uniform and um, I might cover that one up and if that's the case then um, I'm going to trim that because there's no reason to lose part of a flower. Um, okay, so there's that. Probably add um, I wonder if okay, maybe. So that's kind of where I'm thinking I'm going with this. And then I want to add, I'm going to put these, put these away for now. Um, this needs a little bit of green on this end, so I think I'll add this guy down here. Okay, so. got some more pieces but these we might use in a bit okay let's clean this off you know I'm a 
worried that I'm taking way too long. And I'm wondering if we might want to um, either take a break and finish this out um, next week. Because let me see how long we're... I've been going forever. Okay, I've been going forever. So why don't we either take a break um, and finish this next week, or actually, I think we got a pretty good start on this. Why don't we all take it from here and finish our pages, and then let's share them in our Facebook group um, and see what we all come up with. Um, in terms of following the sketch and our everybody kind of we've all got a good starting point and I think we can um, take it from here and and see how everybody finishes their their page I think I'm gonna add some stitching and some other things but um, I've got the bones of it done here so and then I think I'm gonna put my title down either all the way across or just over on this side. I haven't decided yet, but um, I'll share it with you in our Facebook group. I just didn't realize how long I'd been going and Bob just gave me the look. So anyway, um, I wanna thank everybody for joining me and uh, putting up with my rambling. And uh, I hope that you're enjoying these weekly um, Sunday fun day lives and I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying taking time, um, to do something creative because I oftentimes get stuck, um, doing all the other stuff. So this has been really fun for me and, um, I'm loving reading all of your comments. I'm really enjoying visiting with everybody in our Facebook group. If you haven't joined our Facebook group, please, um, go ahead and do it. It's super fun. Tons of people in there and we share all kinds of ideas and we have like just little chats you can join in. Um, if you were working on a project or wanted to um, sneak in and um, and join in our um challenge our March challenges we've got our sketch challenge which is not this sketch but there's another sketch and it's in our Facebook group you have until six o'clock today Pacific Standard Time to share your finished layout um, for the challenge on each one of the threads in our Facebook group that uh, coordinate with the with the challenge and we will be revealing or announcing the winner next week next week and the winner will be receiving a 20 or we'll have two winners one for the sketch and one for the mood board and each one of the winners will receive a 25 dollars gift certificate to our store uh which is which is great you can um it's a great way to pick up something that you've been eyeing or you know treat yourself a little bit uh, so be sure to do that, uh, if you like our, the video today and, uh, you want to see more of them, go ahead and give a like to my video. And if you haven't already done so, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you get notified every time we add something new. And I believe that you'll get uh, notifications of when we schedule our lives. So um, you'll know that they're coming up and you'll have uh, some information as to what we have planned for the week. Um, so I think that that's everything. Um, Quickly, uh, also, too, um, we upload new process videos to our YouTube channel every day. We share projects in our on our Instagram daily, and we have reels that we share on our Instagram 
uh, several times during the week. So if you're looking for some quick inspiration and you don't have a lot of time, but you, you know, want something to kind of spark your, your creativity for a future project, the reels are a great way to, to, uh, to do that. And our process videos are a great way to, um, learn something new or find, a clever way to use a product that you're tired of using the same way over and over again. So uh, be sure to do all of those things. And for all of the details about our March kits and all of our previous kits and how to subscribe to our Hip Kit Club, uh, be sure to visit our website at www.hipkitclub.net. And if you decide to subscribe, keep in mind you receive a 15% discount on all of your add-on kit purchases, which really can add up. Um, and you also receive uh, free access to our cut files uh, every month. And if you're not a subscriber, you can purchase our cut files. They run about $1.99 a piece. So as a subscriber, if you use our cup files uh, each month, we put out between six and eight. So you're at about $12 to $16 um, in free cup files, which is a great deal. And then you get your kit on top of it. And um, so you have lots to work with. So without further ado, I'm going to say goodbye for today. And thanks for joining me, and I will see you all next time. Bye.